it's a familiar situation, I'm sure. You're in a cave when you realise that you've forgotten to wear your umbrella. And all you've got to do it with an apple of no mass, a banana, and a ruler. So how are you going to do it? Obviously it helps you know about moments. We'll use the banana as the pivot. And now we'll get the umbrella to balance on the pivot so we can find its centre of mass. Next we hang the apple from the umbrella and find the new balance position. And all that remains is to measure the distance from the new balance point to the centre of mass and to the apple. So here's a simplified version of the situation. Here's the pivot point, which was the banana. This force is the weight of the apple, and this force is the weight of the brolly. We know that really every part of the umbrella had a bit of weight, so the weight should really be lots of little forces all the way along the length. But for simplicity, we often treat the weight of an object as if it was all acting at one point, which we call the centre of mass. Now we notice that for the umbrella, the centre of mass isn't in the middle. And that's because the shape of the umbrella isn't uniform. Now the weight of the umbrella is the thing that we're going to try to find, so we're going to call that W. The weight of the apple we are able to find, because we know that the mass of the apple was 120 grams, and we know that one kilogram has a weight of 9.81 newtons. So if I multiply 0.120, that's 120 grams in kilograms, multiply that by 9.81 we get a value for the weight of the apple of 1.18 newtons so that's a useful reminder if you ought to think about how big a newton is a newton is about the weight of an apple which is quite appropriate if you think about the stories about newton and apples and the distances that we measure, the distance between the banana and the apple was 0 0.360 metres and the distance between the banana or the pivot and the centre of mass of the umbrella was 0 0.110 metres and now we're able to calculate the value for W so we know we have a situation that's in equilibrium so we know we can use the principle of moments and it's worth writing it down. Total clockwise moment equals total anticlockwise moment. And of course we're taking moments about the pivot, which was the banana. So if we look at this as the pivot point, we're going to deal with the clockwise moments first. Which force would tend to make the system turn clockwise? And the answer is if that's the pivot, the weight W of the umbrella is the thing that's tending to turn the whole system clockwise. So the clockwise moment, the force is W, and the distance between the pivot and that force is 0 0.110 metres. So W times 0 0.110, that's the clockwise moment, there aren't any other forces with the clockwise moment. So that must be equal to the anticlockwise moment. And similarly, if we take the pivot there, the force that's tending to turn everything anticlockwise is this one. So the anticlockwise moment, 1.18 newtons times the distance from the pivot, which is 0 0.360 meters. So if I want to find W, then if I look at this equation, I could either multiply the numbers out now, but I find it a bit easier to look at the equation and see that to get W on its own I need to divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.110. So I can write W equals 1.18 times 0 0.360 divided by 0 0.110 
So 1.18 times 0 0.360 divided by 0 0.110, which is 3.86 newtons. So we've found the weight of the umbrella, but supposing it wasn't really the weight we wanted, supposing what we really wanted was to find the mass of the umbrella. What's the connection between mass and weight? And the answer of course is that weight is equal to mass times the gravitational field strength. So if I want to find the mass of the umbrella, I would take the weight, so mass equals weight divided by the gravitational field strength which will be 3.86 newtons divided by the gravitational field strength of course 9.81 newtons per kilogram so if I take the weight and I divide by 9.81 kilograms. or 394 grams.